Hi, I'm Dan from Buckethead Studios, and today we're going to be painting the bull statue from June. Now, a client reached out to me and said, if they send me a model, could I paint it to look like it does in the movie? I said, yes, absolutely. So they had it printed and sent to me. Now, this statue can be seen in the movie just twice, and uh, it's kind of meant to symbolize uh, House Atreides, I believe. Uh, their symbol is the bull, but the statue is of an aged bronze effect, and that's what we're gonna be painting today. So this video will be also a tutorial on how to paint bronze. So the client had this print sent to me. It is a resin print, it is lovely. I think it's a little bit smaller than the one in the movie, but we're gonna paint it up and do it justice anyway. So it's gonna look like a lovely little bronze figure. And this came to be primed in a gray primer, but I wasn't overall happy with the, the finish of everything. There was lots of marks where the supports were. So I decided to go in and sand and fill everything to make it smooth. This involved a lot of work on one side of the base, uh, just to tidy that up. The bull had quite a lot of, um, layer lines a lot of step marks in there so it's important to fill and sand those out because i feel like it detracts from the overall look of this supposedly solid polished bronze statue the little human figure and the flag actually came out quite well i think there are marks of supports on there and they, there are these little nobbles all over it but uh i didn't go ahead and fix those the overall finish of the statue was pretty good to fill, I use 3M Green Acryl Spot Putty. Uh, this stuff is really great. I just use a clay modeling tool to apply it, and this stuff goes on very well, and it dries pretty quickly, depending on how thickly you do it. Obviously, the thicker you do it, the longer it will take to dry. If you apply it in a thin layer, it can be ready to sand pretty quickly, but I usually leave them overnight just to be sure. As I said, there's a lot of layer shifting on that ball, especially you can see on the horn there as well. And so I just went in and refined those layer shifts and filled them and sanded them smooth just to improve the overall look and it didn't take too long. I went in with files just to refine that horn shape so it matched the one on the other side. Before I painted everything, I cleaned everything with isopropyl alcohol. This is pretty standard practice when it comes to painting. Just gets rid of all the dust and everything. So now I can begin the paint job. The first thing I did was prime with a black surface primer. For this, I used my airbrush. I like using my airbrush to base out colors. Um, you can, of course, do this by hand. The airbrush will just give you a much smoother finish, much quicker. And yeah, if you, if you can get an airbrush and use an airbrush, I would recommend doing it. After that primer layer was dry, I mixed a burnt umber and a black to get a dark brown and then did a really wet coat on this just to base everything out in a dark brown. This gives a great undercoat to the rest of the paint job and we're going to be doing everything in lots of layers so this, this undercoat is key to building up all that colour and as you can see, even just with a base brown, we've already got the, the look that we're going for but it's time to add all those layers to make this look metallic and shiny and weathered. The way this model was modeled in particular is actually really clever. The bull's legs and the human's legs are just a little bit wider than the holes, just a fraction, and there's enough flex in the resin just to pull them in and place them in those holes, and they actually lock in place rather well without any glue. To begin adding armor tag layers, I first used this copper. This one in particular is actually called Worn Penny. These ones are actually very affordable paints, and just because we're basing the, the model out in this, I'm really happy using a cheaper paint just to get some color on there i mostly dry brush this over the whole thing just went over everything and as you can see the the brown layer underneath still shows through but we're just adding that layer on top and as i said there's lots of layers to this that just create the depth that we need for this paint job as you can see we're starting to get somewhere now Now, if you look at actual bronze statues, they're, they're really not that warm of a color. Like this copper color is very, very warm. And what we want to do is take that down. So I'm using a green ink. And um, this is very thin. As you can see, I even watered it down even more. You can see I'm just applying it there, then letting it sit a little bit, but taking it off mostly with a little sponge. And this will really mute down the, the warmth of that copper paint and give us a, a great tone that's way more in line with a bronze statue rather than a copper statue. Thank you. 
Now our next layer is a black. So this I watered down again to do a black wash. You can see how thin it is as I apply it. But again, this will help mute down those colors and as you can see we're, we're really muting it down it doesn't look fantastic at the moment uh, all these layers do add up though and once we get to the next layers you'll see how all these start to play together this black wash again just takes down some of that copper and that shininess and just gives us a great base color to start doing our top metallics and weathering which is where this piece is going to really start to shine now comes our weathering, especially the verdigris. This one is a great paint, but we're gonna first use the darker ones to make a base. Now I just use makeup sponges to apply this. Look for cheap makeup sponges. They are really close poured sponges and they come pre-cut into triangles so you can do different work. These are great for applying paint like this. I went over most of it actually in this uh, dark turquoise color, but more specifically thinking about where the kind of weathering would happen that if this piece was a real piece and it was cleaned or handled which pieces would be wearing and which pieces wouldn't get the cleaning that we need and so places like under the bull under its legs these kind of places will be places where you wouldn't be able to clean so easily therefore where verdigree and aging would happen And of course I added extra down in the creases on the base and around where the legs would attach. Now the next one was this verdigree and this paint is amazing. So it, it goes on and as you can see it's got like this really dusty quality to it which really it's, it's just like a matte dust that it turns into especially if you dry brush it like I was doing. And again I went over pretty much everything but again focusing on where these things might accumulate a little more and yeah this paint this paint is just the key to this paint job really it really sells that aged bronze look We're just trying to get lots of variations in tone and as you can see most of it is covered in this but you've got all those previous layers coming through and right now it still looks pretty weathered now if this was the look you were going for that if it was left outside and you wanted it to look really weathered you could stop right here but oh no we're not done yet we're going to add one final layer which is really going to make this piece sing the paints I'm going to use for this are the ones I had, which are a titanium gold and a bronze. And when we think about applying this, we're going to go for the areas which would be touched maybe a little bit more. So we're going to go for high points like the top of the head, the top of the, the guy's body there, the, the sort of shoulder crown of the, the bull and uh, down his neck are going to be really points that would be clean and polished and handled. So they're going to be nice and polished too and as well as the flat surfaces and the edges all these points would not really get weathered so it's where we're going to focus that gold highlight and again you just need a really light touch with this just start light you can always add more it's really hard to go back and take stuff off so I go on really really quite lightly just adding little bits at a time and really thinking about where I'm applying it this time. I do all sorts of things like using my finger using sponges just to vary the marks we don't want any brush marks per se that are very obvious this is the telltale sign that it's been painted over being a real object so we're going to use water we're going to use a finger we're going to use the sponge just to blend out all that kind of stuff and make it look like it's been made of metal and cleaned rather than painted you know what filming this you can, can you tell i'm a, I'm a uh, <laughs> an experienced YouTuber. So many shots with my hand just right in the way. And there we go, I'll leave you with me applying those final gold touches. And I went back and forth between applying gold, applying a bit more of that light green verdigree, just to really blend out everything and make it all seem cohesive together.
Once everything was done, I hit it with a satin clear coat, nothing too fancy. And then just because I didn't like how shiny that was, I actually did go back and add some more of that green verdigris just to add some matteness back in and some tonal variation. But after that, it was done. So here are the glamour shots. So there we go, that's the piece all done. This piece is of course off to the client. I hope that they love it. If you'd like me to paint something for you, do of course reach out. I'm more than happy to take on paint commissions at the moment. Got a bit of a bit of a free schedule when it comes to commissions, so do hit me up if you want something painted. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to paint bronze. This is the ball statue from June. I will see you guys in the next video, and of course, until then, take care. Bye-bye.